Got a good 1v1 here for you guys. Empire versus the Beastmen. Romulan Dog is going to be squaring off downfield against the Foul Chaos Spawn Beastmen. So let's take a look at these two armies very quickly because this is going to be quite a quick... I'm sorry, quite a long quick battle. So taking a look at Romulan Dog's army, I'm going to pause this here. Uh, we've got two units of Empire Knights and two units of Knights of the Blazing Sun fighting for the might of Myrmidia. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to be seeing quite a few units of spearmen. One, two, three, four units of spearmen. Three total units of Free Company Militia with the Sterling's Revenge Resident of Renown version of the Sterling's uh, Militia. Or Free Company Militia, my bad. Uh, and then a unit of Flagellants, one Great Cannon. Uh, we're also going to be seeing a Jade Wizard with Regrowth and Earthblood as well as Awakening the Wood. Go ahead and focus on that, which is a really great damage spell that also slows things in the um, aura around it. Now, lastly, we're going to be seeing, of course, the, the mighty Karl Franzia, the, the bag slapping king himself, uh, with, with Galmaraz, not Reichlin Runefang. So, just Galmaraz and Foe Seeker. Um, we'll see him doing some uh, lovely damage on his uh, Griffin, as always. Now, we're also going to be seeing two units of Pistoliers looking to do some, uh, some ranged kind of harassment fire. Now, for the Beastmen, we're going to see two units of Senegors with throwing axes, and I believe one more. Oh, no, no, no. One, just two of these units right here. Uh, these, as you know, is a, are a pretty hard staple against Empire. They do a lot of AP damage. They're great at focusing down Karl Franz, any of the uh, leadership portions of the Empire, and they can do just so much damage and stay nice and out of range of everything. Now we're going to see two units of Ungor, I'm sorry, three, four total units of Ungor Spearmen Herds, uh, the Korox Man Rippers, which are the best Agor Herd Regiment of Renown units that basically give you access to halberds and anti, um, anti-large and anti, uh, or AP, AP, not anti-armor. <laughs> now we're going to see the Sons of Goros, which are the Centigors with great weapons, um, uh, Regiment Renown unit. Of course, the Goros is the famed named character Centigor of the Beastmen. These guys get access to Guardian as well as Perfect Vigor. They have AP, they do magic damage, so they're really in it to win it. A uh, unit of Chaos Warhounds with Poison. We're going to just be, we're going to be seeing a Bray Shaman of Death with both Spirit Leech and Purple Zone of Zerius and the Jacket Dagger for some uh, recharge. Also a great Eye of More Sleep, Cygor. This Regiment Renown version of the Cygor. He has a very dangerous ability called Warp Gaze. He can lock things down for a whole 12 seconds, which can be quite deadly. Um, in addition to that here, he has a much higher missile damage um, and more AP too, for that matter. Uh, ranged Rocket is a big, huge chunk of warp stone here, which is pretty uh, gnarly. Uh, we're also gonna be seeing some Gore Herds as well as some Harpies on the right flank and another unit of Gore Herds over here on the left flank. Let's get this uh, battle underway here. Like I said, it is quite a drawn out one. Well, not drawn out, but a long one. And we will be uh, fast forwarding through some portions of it. But for the most part, you can already see that we're getting some initial damage underway. I have more sleep, just barely misses this free company militia. The great cannon is already shooting down range at that eye of more sleep as well. Uh, the pistolier is looking to do some harrying in the front line possibly abusing or, or doing some damage under the Centigors. Uh, we do have the Bray Shaman of Death on a Centigore Chariot, and I, I forgot to mention this here, but we do have, of course, Morgher Shadowgrave himself, probably the best lord as far as uh, overall competitiveness for the Beastmen goes, and just so tanky. Ooh, a nice Eye of Morsley splatters into the, some Free Company Militia, doing quite a bit of damage to them, whopping 18 kills on these guys. Uh, the nice thing about Free Company Militia is that for the most part, you will be dealing with harassment from the entire line of the Beastmen. You know, you're dealing with Chaos Warhounds, dealing with Harpies, um, any kind of um, uh, Raiders, anything that's got some way of getting to the back line and doing damage to these Free Company Militia. They do have their swords. They're quite good in combat. They can at least hold their own until they get relief from Spearmen or anything else of the sort. Uh, Pistolers here doing some continued damage into the Centigors. Uh, just getting some kind of shots on here, getting, getting kind of initial picks that they can. Uh, you've got the Sons of Goros and the Chaos Warhounds looking to kind of tighten that noose here on these Pistoliers, which are now getting some shots in from I of Morsleep as well. Uh, but again, just looking to do some initial harrying shots. Both armies kind of taking their time here. No one's rushing to the fore. No one's looking to jump into things, over committing units and getting killed early. Uh, we see Karl Franz kind of making his way over here as well. Kind of brandishing that Galmaraz. Getting just chucked down though with some, um, ooh, and a Spirit Leech. And the, you can see those Centicors with throwing axes, they just, they don't mess around. He's already lost a good chunk of health and that was just from one volley and one Spirit Leech. So you can see Karl Franz 
recalling back to the rest of his army, looking to hopefully get some heals going here. Eye of Morsleep is continuing to shoot down range, though, at the Grand Cannon. It's already knocked one of them out, and it's just going to do chunks of damage for every time it lands into this cannon. The cannon is, again, shooting down range back as well. It looks like uh, two Eye of Morsleep itself. Um, the nice thing here is the Eye of Morsleep is, of course, a moving artillery piece. See, every time he chucks a, a rock, uh, Romulan Dog's opponent has kind of moved him around. So it makes it so that getting the Great Cannon to continue firing is uh, accurately on this target is a little bit harder because it can constantly juke out these cannonball shots. Uh, Pistolers, again, just looking to do any kind of harrying damage over here. Scoring some kills uh, left and right onto the Senegors. Uh, cannonballs are diverted over to the Sons of Goros, so probably a little bit better of a target. The Sons of Goros can do quite a bit of damage here from the eight to as far as an AP value goes to both Karl Franz and all of the really elite um, cavalry. I mean, I love me some Knights of the Blazing Sun. You don't get to see these guys too often, so it's awesome when you do get a good replay of them just kind of brandishing their fiery weapons. Just charging right in here, right into the fray. Into those Sons of Goros, got the Chaos Warhounds jumping into this as well. Brayshawn of Death jumping into this even more so. Then even more more so, we've got some Empire Knights jumping in as well. What's this falling down though? Looks like we're going to have a Purple Son of Xerius or a Awakening Wood dropping onto this conflict. Ooh, and I have more sleep. Does a nice friendly, dam friendly fire damage crippling these Chaos Warhounds with poison. And boom, Purple Son of Xerius landing onto those Empire Knights just doing tons and tons of damage here. Now... Um, the Beastmen got pretty lucky here that the, the, uh, Purple Sun of Xerius for the most part stayed pretty much on point with the Empire Knights, and you had just a little bit of damage on the Knights of the Blazing Sun who were able to squeeze away from that. Spirit Leech landing on them as well. A good target for these guys. You want to get their, you want to get their health down as fast as possible here. Just get rid of them. Sons of Goro, so just getting completely trash canned early in this fight here. That is unfortunate trade uh, between these Empire Knights and the uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun, who were ultimately able to do quite well in that engagement here. Carl Franz getting dangerously close to a really, really dangerous engagement up here. Um, up onto this Bray Shaman. It's got to be careful, though. That Warp Gaze can lock him down for a long... Oh, and that is it, I think. Yep, Warp Gaze has just locked him into pace place pinned him down the gore herd are just charging into him you've got the uh the Korox man rippers up here that can do a lot of damage ap anti-large against carl franz he's popped foe seeker here to help out hopefully waking waiting for warp gaze to get off so he can get out of this engagement but he's also now popped gall moraz looking to do any damage to things that come his way now this is going to divert a lot of attention for romulan dog he has to do something to help relieve carl franz he is in a real bad rut here Nice uh, charge in for the Knights of the Blazing Sun, but Morgher has shout, has summoned up some spawn to keep Karl Franz pinned in this engagement. The uh, Eye of Morsleep has also joined in on the fray as well, looking to just drop down portions of Warpstone. We also have a pile-in from uh, uh, Morgher himself, and then in addition, the Bray Shaman is looking to get in and out of that fray, and we have even more pile-in from the Man Manrippers. Now... Karl Franz has got regrowth popped on him, an overcasted one that should help out with some of the damage mitigation coming his way. But the nice thing that is working to his advantage is he can do some damage to the Eye of Morsleep since he has Galmaraz popped right now. Um, but really, Romulan Dog has to get him out of this fight as fast as possible. He's already starting to waver. He's about to break here. He's completely surrounded. But he does have some Knights of the Blazing Sun and Empire Knights to help out in this engagement. Let me just get some uh, a better surveillance of the rest of the battlefield here. Um, just as kind of a quick recap, these Pistoliers were doing uh, some herring damage again over to these Centigors as they chase them across the battlefield, uh, pushing up through this portion and back over here. Um, the left portion of the Empire Line has connected over with this unit of Ungor Spearmen. We can see that one, two, and three units of Free Company Militia are now getting in bettering firing range against the Eye of Morsleep here. You can see that they're, uh, that they're actually not targeting the Eye of Morsleep, they're targeting Gorher is what it looks like. Um... In addition to that, we've got the Jade Wizard coming up from the rear. Um, it has casted uh, uh, Regrowth onto Karl Franz to kind of help mitigate some damage here. But in the very, very back line, we also see um, the Harpies have shut down the Great Cannon. But really, this is this is the main fight. This is this is the all-in engagement right now. Three Company Militia have... One of them is... Uh, oh, both are now on the Eye of Morsleep shooting down because it is a larger target. They can target it quite easily. They don't have to worry about as much friendly fire in this engagement right now. A nice, good regrowth being uh, hit down onto... Oh, remember, 
Um, with the, I'm sorry, Earthblood. With the most recent patch, Earthblood can't hit all these units. It's capped out at four. So, um, I think Romulan Dog just kind of risked it and said, hey, if it hits if it hits Carl Franz, good. If not, I don't really care. And he popped it down, and it's really going to give health to everything in this, in this radius here. Mainly happened down to the uh, Spearmen and hopefully the Knights of the Blazing Sun. I didn't see where all it landed. We have one unit of Empire Knights starting to flee off the table here. The uh, Free Company Militia just shooting wildly into this unit. We have the Harpies that were on the Great Cannon have now jumped into the rear of the Free Company Militia. They do have some Empire Knights to kind of help relieve them. And this unit of Spearmen coming all the way from the back to help out as well. But Senegars with Throwing Axes are just plowing right through these Free Company Militia. Lots of damage is being put into this pocket here against that Eye of More Sleeve mainly. Trying to shut that thing down. It's been doing so much damage and just destroying swaths and chunks of the Empire line this entire fight. Probably a better. This is a better view. Uh, Pistolier's coming in here to do more damage onto those Centigors as well. Um, which is a, a really good move right there. Uh, Earthblood tripped off on the back here to help out the Knights of Blazing Sun and the Empire Knights. Centigors charging in on this unit of Free Company Militia, looking to shut down some of that range fire coming the way of Ayer the Morslebe. His health is quite low as well. Ooh! And an Awakening Wood blows up here, doing a lot of damage to this uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun, but mainly doing damage to the Korok's Man Rippers, slowing them down as well. We have Karl Franz swooping in out of nowhere, looking to just do some damage here and help put down that Eye of Morsleeve. It is in such bad shape. It is just fleeing now off, this, off the tabletop. We do have Morgur here, and he does need to have uh, some damage put onto him, but... Romulan Dog is focusing primarily on the Eye of Morsleep. He's got Spirit Leech that just hit onto Karl Franz, doing quite a bit of damage as well. The Empire Knights and the uh, Knights of Blazing Sun are doing what they can to smash into this unit of Chaos Spawn that are recently summoned up by um, Warger Shadowgrave here. Um, and in an interesting, interesting little engagement, uh, Romulan Dog has pulled his Pistoliers into this entire fight. Now, against Korox Man Rippers, it's not going to be so advised because they will do a lot of damage. Um, but we can see Karl Franz is pushing out over here to the, um, the Bray Shaman Sorcerer of Death, which is a good target. Shut down that casting lane for uh, the, the Beastman here. He is taking quite a bit of damage as well. He's, he's well below a quarter health. Well, he's at about a quarter health. <laughs> um, but you can see here, Bray Shaman is fleeing off the table. And I think that uh, really... Oh, and he has now shattered, so he'll keep going off this table. Uh, Romulan Dog decided uh, probably to pull off from that target and focus on the Eye of Morsleep. He doesn't want this thing coming back to just chunk things down, down range. He's got some spearmen over there to support it. Um, this left flank has now fallen here. You can see the Ungors um, and Gors are pushing through the spearmen into the rest of this line. The Free Company Militia, though, are just consistently putting a lot of range, firepower, and pressure on the rest of the Beastmen, which is quite good. Uh, the Jade Wizard is holding the line here against these Ungor Spearmen herds, which is um, not not too terrible because the Ungors are, are pretty, you know, terrible by comparison to uh, a hero character. Uh, a single, f or eight Flagellants looking to help out that Jade Wizard as well, but Morgur is just kind of swooping through things um, looking to just do tons of damage. He's so tanky. Balfron's coming in here doing a nice big chunk of damage with this good charge bonus. Um, he really can't stay in too prolonged of a fight, though, because Morgar will eventually just chip his health down. Um, we've got the rest of that flank of both Ungors and Gorherd smashing into the Sterling's Revenge. We do have the Am Knights of the Blazing Sun trying to do some help here, and some Harpies joining into the fray as well. Uh, the Free Company Militia, though, are still up and, up and firing and shooting into these units. We can see they're primarily focused... Where? <laughs> I think it's just the Gore. Yeah, the Gore Herds. Um, Karl Franz coming to help out this line as well. Bringing his uh, his terror from his griffin to the fore. I'm sorry, yeah, his griffin to the fore. Hippogriff, Hippogriff, Hippogriff. I can see the chest. Um, to the fore. Um, is it a Hippogriff? No. Oh, yes, it is. Now, now that I see the tiger butt, it's a Hippogriff. Um... Helping out with the terror there, though. Getting some of those beastmen to start routing off the tables. So you can terrify... Terrified, terrified. They will come back um, once that terror kind of uh, kind of wears off a little bit. You do have a unit of Centigors up there just kind of hanging out, which is advantageous for um, Romulan Dog because they would be doing all the damage that is needed for Karl Franz right now. You got 827 health. He's really in a bad position. There are quite a few Empire units though, so hopefully they can do the damage to Morger. You can see Romulan Dog is doing a real great job of just cycle charging him back and forth into Morgur. He's not even bringing him back up into the air. He's just kind of bringing him out of the conflict, then right back around and into the conflict. 
um, pop post post seeker here to help out with some speed and vigor. We do see another Earth Blood. Now, um, this did not land on Carl Franz. It was the flagellants. It was the spearmen over here and here. So I think, unfortunately, I think that that Earth Blood would have been better focused on Carl Franz. Um, it really run the risk though of maybe it was misclicked from a from a flag whatever the situation was and who knows what the winds of magic are at this point that's the first spell we've seen in quite a long time and i imagine uh the winds of power reserves are quite low at this point but carl franz is starting to waver a little bit here he's got very very little health at 170 health morgan has 2000 health you can see he's constantly regenerating as he stays in combat here he's just trying to knock down as much health as they can from morgan just keeps pushing himself up though um, that's the that's the tanky thing about Morker. He just drops the hammer here on Carl Franz, killing the Emperor of the Empire, and the uh, Jade Wizard looking to help out as best he can. But really, Morker is in a very strong position right now. There's not a lot of things that can really threaten him. We got those Centigors coming back from that uh, that little that point up here. They are getting gunned down by the Sterling's Revenge and the Free Company Militia, but they're going to have a good charge in here onto the Sterling's Revenge, which is going to be pretty devastating for the Empire uh, player. I'm sorry, for Romulan Dog. <laughs> and we also see these uh, the Korok's Fan Rippers are coming back as well with 17 models, and they're going to be able to do quite a bit of damage here. Uh, Morgur is just dunking back and forth, getting ready for a Space Jam onto that Jade Wizard, and the Jade Wizard is already starting to, free, to flee, and he is broken. So... We're, we're in a really interesting situation here. The balance of power bar is dead even. We have lost Carl Franz for Romulan Dog. And uh, the Beastmen are in a, a little bit stronger of a position in, this, in, in my mind right now. Um, they do still have these Free Company Militia with some ammunition, but we just lost the Sterling's Revenge right there. Um, the Jade Wizard is in very, very bad shape and is going to be chased off the board more than likely. And you can see the rest of Empire forces are tucktailing and run, running after... They saw the death of the mighty Emperor. I'm going to fast forward this just a little bit. A little bit more speed on this engagement here. We can see that the uh, unit of free company militia and flagellants were able to fight off the situation over here. The Korok fan rippers are still in good health. Well, they're still alive. That's probably a better way to put it. Not good health. So they can do uh, some threatening things, but it looks like their leadership is waning so badly that if, once they get into an engagement and take a, a volley or two from those free company militia, they'll be uh, running as well. Uh, but we have unit of spearmen coming back here, here, and here, uh, looking to hopefully put some additional damage on a Morgur. Uh, one unit of Ungors uh, is coming back into this fray as well, but for the most part, it's pretty much down to Morgur, this unit of Ungors, and now no longer this unit of Korok Man Rippers, which is now uh, fled. Fast forward this a little bit, get these units uh, back into combat here. Another fleeing unit here from the Ungors, as their their leadership just can't stand this. But it is pretty much now down to just Morgur. Taking shots in the face like a champion here. 1,300 health. We saw him at 1,000 or 2,000 earlier. He's still just holding the line. He is so beastly and tanky. It's disgusting. Everyone's just kind of con con converging on this one point. Getting as much damage as they can. We have those gore herds coming back from the fray or coming back into the fray from fleeing there. Uh, which is good here that they can do some good damage to this engagement. Uh, everyone's starting to waver. The, the balance of power has shifted in the hev heavily in the favor of the Beastmen, but we can see that it is slowly ticking back towards Romulan Dog. So this has just been a, a very vicious tug of war back and forth. We have um, uh, this unit of the Sterling's Revenge has now come back, uh, but is in very, very poor morale shape. Oof, Morgher is just getting clipped apart. His leadership is faltering here. Balance of power is shifting now again towards the Empire yet again. And we're just it's a it's a ping pong back and forth of both health and leadership for these two armies. We had another fleeing unit of spearmen. We've got this free company militia, which cannot shoot. They are currently obstructed. They get one final shot in there before charging into Morgher, bringing those little rapiers to bear here. It's scimitars. Yeah, those are definitely scimitars. Definitely scimitars. And all the pressure is on to Morgur here. We're going to fast forward this just a little bit. And it's just a... He's he's stomping back and forth. His leadership is just barely hanging on. Hit points are going all over the place. Leadership you can see here. Um, 
tons of tons and tons and tons of damage sustained. He is completely surrounded here. Um, actually, it says Flink secured. Interesting enough, um, friends routing indeed. He's quite tired. Uh, interesting. That it said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the spearman. What an idiot. And there we go. The <laughs> Romulan dog just barely pulls that one out, <clears throat> even as his units were fleeing. Uh, my son Herbert Walker. In fact, I didn't even realize that was who he was playing against. Uh, just barely loses to Romulan Dog in, in just a grudge match at the very end there. Um, taking a look at the post-battle report here, we can see 121 kills from Morger. Uh, the Brave Shaman got a lot of kills in from between the Chariot and the Purple Son of Xerius that he dropped in earlier. Um, but really, the Eye of Morsleep, 107 kills. I think it was just dropping bombs all game. And it was really doing a ton of damage. 145 kills from Korok's Man Rippers, as well as a total of 110 kills from the Gore Herds. Really bringing in a, a ton of damage onto uh, a lot of the front line of the Empire, which was relatively unarmored and, you know, very base. It, just tier 1 troops in, in um, the Spearmen. But again, on that same note, 64, 27, 51, 31 kills across all Spearmen, 80 kills on the Flagellants, lots of kills in these Free Company Militia, 83 and 51 on these guys. Um, you can see the Knights of the Blazing Sun had a total of, what, 111 kills or so, or 115 kills. Um, really doing a ton of damage. Uh, the Empire Knights, too. 22 and 61. The Great Cannon wasn't able to do a whole ton. It was focused on the Eye of Morsleep the entire fight, but I think that Romulan Dog should have taken it off of the Eye of Morsleep because it wasn't doing like any damage and it was in turn getting traded very, very sufficiently for my son Herbert Walker. He was able to knock the cannon down so quickly before the Harpies even were able to destroy it. So I think the Great Cannon being on a different target would have helped a lot with um, the tug back and forth of all of these units the entire game. But amazing game here, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hats off to both my son, Herbert Walker, and Romulan Dog. Um, great, great, great game. But again, more to come. Plenty more uh, quick battles on the channel coming your way. But as always, have a good one and take care.